My first British experience was on a hiking tour through Scotland. What I remember most about that tour was the rain. Three weeks we were there, and I think we had three days of sunshine. And I don't think I would have survived the wet there if it hadn't been for what Robert Louis Stevenson referred to as the king of drinks, and the Scots themselves call the water of life, their whiskey. Now, each region in the country has its own unique single malt whiskey, and there are nearly 100 distilleries in the country. But despite the prevalence, for centuries, drinking whiskey was a men's domain. Women were excluded from partaking in the drink at all, at least outside of the privacy of their own homes. Of course, there are no longer laws keeping women in Scotland out of whiskey bars. And more and more ladies are coming out of the closet as whiskey drinkers. Many are even joining Scotland's premier whiskey connoisseurs club, the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. However, our reporter Cheryl Northey, when she went to Edinburgh, Scotland, had some personal reservations against this new female taste, and she went there to see if she could be persuaded otherwise. Okay, so my dad has his nightly ritual where he grinds up ice in this really old machine that makes this horrible sound like grinding bones. (laughs) And then he packs it into a tumbler and fills it with whiskey from this crystal decanter we have. And this is the crazy bit, right? He just splashes a little bit of ginger ale in and the whole ice shoots up and I would bend down and slurp it up. (laughs) That was when I was a kid slurping my dad's whiskey. Looking back now, it's terribly unsophisticated. And, you know, whiskey is for men, like my dad. So when the rain lured me into the whiskey bar on a recent trip to Edinburgh, Scotland, I was really surprised to see this young woman, about my age, sitting at the bar all by herself. She was swivelling on a stool and looking wistfully out the window with this tiny glass of honey-coloured whiskey in her hand. Her name's Florence. The only whiskey I really drink is Old Pulteney because it's brewed in my hometown in Wick and it's quite a big thing and it's really, really quite good. It's quite peaty, like the Highland whiskies are, and it's very dark and it's a malt. So the whiskey bar has 200 different varieties of single malt Scotch whiskey and the bar is stacked floor to ceiling with these really beautiful bottles. The Australian bartender Chris says he has noticed more women ordering whiskey over wine. Women generally like lighter whiskies, like Speysides or light Highland whiskies. Not so much the Island whiskies like Talisco and, or Isla whiskies or stuff like that. Don't really like Ardberg generally as much. Ardberg's a bit very smoky and peaty. So they mightn't be slurping up whiskey like I used to as a kid, but Chris doesn't think they're very discerning whiskey drinkers. Start with alcohol to start with. However, I met a woman who proved him wrong. Her name's Anne Griffiths and she's from the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. It's this exclusive whisky appreciation association. And she says she's not the exception because more and more women are joining the club. They're very challenging. They like to do to try different things. And even with whisky, the spectrum of what they like, they don't just like sweet whiskies from um, bourbon cask that are sweet and very creamy and vanilla. They, they really go for the big, punchy Isla whiskies. So they've got a huge spectrum of taste. I sat with Anne in these 18th century vaults. It was this beautiful old sandstone building and inside the room had wood panelling and these really gorgeous tailored sofas. It was really, really sophisticated, actually a little bit intimidating. So in front of us is this long teak table and on the table are these two tiny little glasses with amber-coloured liquid inside. So she showed me how to drink whisky. And we swirled the whiskey around in the glass and the alcohol clung to the sides and dripped down with tiny tears. Gently nose it and then take a little sip onto your tongue. Just a little sip. Mm. Now it's beautiful sweet sensation right at the front of your mouth, drying up as it gets to the back. And already you can start to pick up lots of sharp citricky notes bit of vanilla there at the sweetness when you you got it at the beginning. And it was really overpowering, and I thought, this is what whiskey's about. So when she picked up this sterling silver jug and started to pour water in my whiskey glass, I flinched because I thought of my dad and his ginger ale. That's a very strong whiskey. So what we would also then do, take some water, and just to put a little drop in, because... 
what you're doing when you add water to whiskey is the only thing that you're really taking down is the alcohol. But what it really does is it opens up all the components that are in that glass. There's lots of flavour compounds. So while she's talking, I take this sip of my whiskey and water mix and then I realise just how sensuous whiskey can be. And as the warm liquid trickled down my throat, another childhood memory came rushing back. Not about slurping up spills on the kitchen counter, but it was about my dad again. This time, we were eating pancakes in this converted wool shed. It's cold outside, but it's warm inside. And I can hear the clanging of the pulleys on the boats in the harbour. And all of that from just one tiny sip. And at that moment, it made me realise maybe that's why women are following in their father's footsteps and starting to drink whiskey. I may even start my own nightly ritual, minus the slurping. <laughs>